Hey everybody, Renegade68 here with some more Let's Play Ace Attorney Investigations Miles Edgeworth Prosecutor's Path Blind. So last time, uh, I feel like we're really getting to the end here. Um, I might be able to finish this today. Uh, before I get to that though, I have a fun story to tell. It's what I would be saying if I actually recorded this yesterday when I was going to. But instead, I'm going to mention something else first. My mic officially has feelings. Like, seriously, yesterday I went to record... Plug my mic in, and he just doesn't respond. And it's like, what's wrong, Mike? Also, are you guys noticing that flashing? Um, I think I'm going to reset the emulator in a second. But first, I'm going to tell my story. Um, yeah, so, what was it? Uh, uh, my mic. Yeah, it just, oh my god, that flashing. That's, I can't accept that. Um, but I'm going to tell my story. So yeah, um, my mic uh, just didn't work. Um, I tried unplugging it, replugging it, turned off the computer, turned back on the computer, it didn't work. And then suddenly, a couple hours later, I plugged in and it worked. And that was, of course, about the time I wouldn't have any more time to record. So that's perfect timing, right? Um, and get this, this isn't the first time this happened. Thankfully, it only took that long for it to work again. Because um, during that period of time where there was like several weeks that I wasn't recording for, um, there was one time I went to plug my mic in uh, for, to use Skype and talk to somebody and it didn't work. And it was like that for like multiple days. Um, thankfully, it was during that period of time, but it really freaked me out. Anyways, um, I'm going to reset the emulator real quick because uh, this is freaking me out. Okay, so um, back to my fun story. Hopefully that problem doesn't persist, whatever that was. I've never had it that bad before. Like Occasionally, I've seen flashes when I'm editing, but never have I seen it that often. Anyways, um, my story. So, remember how a few videos back, I'm not sure how many, but I know in this, ca in this case at some point, I did mention the Great Ace Attorney. Well, I got curious and I looked up the Great Ace Attorney. I was wondering, when does that come out? Apparently, it's already out, at least in Japan. It came out a couple months ago, July 9th, I believe it was. Um, a couple months ago from when I'm recording this. It might be like three months ago by the time it's up. I don't know. The point is, though, it's out. Um, so what about the English version, you might be wondering? Eh, it's been only been a couple months, so the English version might not be quite out yet. It might not be out for a couple more months, maybe not until 2016, maybe soon. Um, no, um, it's just not coming out, as far as we know. In fact, shortly after the game was released in Japan, um, they announced uh, in an interview they have no plans to localize it at all, um, which just drove me bonkers when I read that. You know what makes this worse? Um, uh, just recently, like... Um, earlier this month, uh, during the month I'm recording this, which is September, I don't know when it's getting uploaded, but, um, earlier this month, they announced, uh, Gyakuten 7-6, the 6th attorney, the one that comes after Dual Destinies, and guess what? They've already got plans to localize it. It's like, so what, are you just ignoring all the spin-offs forever now? To be fair, I know the main reason they didn't do, uh, AI 2 was because they disbanded their team almost right away, and there was, like, circumstances, but... Is that the same thing for the Greatest Attorney, or are they just being like, fuck it? Because I want Greatest, Greatest Attorney, man. I'm really interested in that game. It's fucking Sherlock Holmes. And, like, if they have to patch it like they did AI 2, there really isn't a good 3DS emulator like there was a DS one, so... It would be really bad. I really hope we get the Greatest Attorney. I'll be mad if we don't. Anyways, back to playing this uh, fan translated game. Now that I'm worried that we might have to fan translate another game already. Anyways... Sebastian, if you really want to save me, you'll have to try a little bit harder, you see. This is... What a dick. Gotta use your head, you know. Honestly, you really are a useless idiot. What a dick of a father. N no way! But I tried real hard! I tried my best, Pops! I went to the school you told me to go to, or reached the top of my class, just like you told me to. There's no way you reached the top of your class. Like, I'm sorry, it doesn't matter what class you're in, there's no way you could have been at the top. Unless he, like, helped you get there. Just look at this jacket! Only someone who graduates at the top of his class gets to wear it! I did everything you told me to do! That's how I got to be the best at the academy! Ah, you did everything you, he told you to do. So you did the test exactly the way he said? That's how you got such good honors? I even won all those awards, just so I could be like you, Pops! And you probably won the awards because he told you how to win them, right? Objection. You really are such an idiot, you know? 
Yup. You know those gold stars you got in your tests? I made the teachers give them to you. Ah, so that's how it happened. Every speech and debate contest, all the judges were my friends. Of course they were. You know, Sebastian, if you weren't even able to notice something like that, you're really not worthy of being called my son, don't you think? Wow, that's harsh. I mean, yeah, he's stupid, but... Wow. Earlier in the case, I was just editing a part earlier in the case, where he's like, he's an idiot, but he's my son, and, I'm lo and I love him. He said something like that. So, yeah, th seeing this now, that's a big change. Also, the flashing keeps happening. That's bad. I don't know why. Ah! 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 What a crybaby. Even my son's disappeared. <laughs> oh my. That's enough to make me cry, you know. Wow. So far, Gustavia is still worse. But you're giving him a run for his money in his uh, Father of the Year award. He was trying his best for me, and yet he was totally useless, you know. You are truly a despicable person. As the chairman of the PIC, and as a father. Even I feel sorry for that foolish prosecutor. Poor Mr. Prosecutor. Blaze the bestie, you. Just what do you think of your own son? He's just a useless pawn, you see. <laughs> Whoa now. Maybe you should look into the mirror before you criticize me, you know? Oh? I mean, even you. You also used Sebastian to get close to me, didn't you? Oh. I cannot deny that. However, he is not a mere pawn. He always tries to do his very best, even if the results aren't up to par. I've seen just how hard he tries, and yet, you refuse to even acknowledge it! Okay, this turn with Justine... I mean, it's not bad, but... I was also editing a part early in the video where I was like, I really wanted to see Justine squirm because, you know, she was maybe a suspect, and they just kind of drop it. Like, I really wanted to see Justine squirm a bit, and I feel like she deserved it. Like, before having this change, we should have seen her squirm a bit. Not seeing it at all kind of hurts her character development, because it's like, oh, she got to be a bitch all, they want, all she wants, and then she gets to be a good guy at her choosing. Yeah, she was, you know, um, incognito working against the PIC, but it still feels a bit iffy, and oh my god, it keeps happening? Oh man, like... Okay, I'm gonna split the part when I think it's about over and then just reset this again, I guess, because that's irritating. It's irritating to me, and it's probably irritating to you as well. Objection. <laughs> this kid is no good, you see, no matter what he does, or is told to do. Prosecutor Edgeworth, I shall leave this offering to the goddess of law to you. Deliver his divine judgment against Blaze Divesti? He doesn't deserve to have the name Debesti like Sebastian. He's only Debesti, whatever that even means. Yes, that was my intention, from the beginning. There was a burn mark on the conductor's face. Then Blaze Debesti must be hiding it. What was he wearing during the auction? That is, the key to revealing the truth. Oh man, I already know what this is. I haven't forgotten. Well then, allow me to hear your answer. Please show the piece of evidence that proves the culprit had a burn mark on his face. See, there's two ways I can go with this. Um, there's the mask, and then there's Lada's testimony, or Karen's test. I always get them confused. Um, yeah. I I was wondering that might be jumping the gun or not, but I guess not. Thank you. Thank you for not thinking that's jumping the gun, because I didn't think it was. If you'd recall Miss Jensen's testimony, there's still one point that remains unexplained. Two types of wigs have been prepared, one of which was left unused. Do you mean the wavy wig? What are you talking about? It was something Miss Jensen found when she switched places with the victim. What does something like that have to do with the burn? 
Inside the costume trunk, Miss Jensen witnessed two wigs. One of them had been used by Miss Jensen to make her look like the victim. Now then, just what was the other wig used for? It doesn't seem like it was a spare wig. There's no need to overthink it. Just compare the attire of the true culprit, the conductor, with that of Blaze de Bestie. Don't stare at me like that! Don't you think there's just one spot where there's a huge contradiction? Specifically, around his face. So that's... Not a wig at all! Oh. What? No, it is a wig. That's the whole point, right? A beard wig? Indeed. It was no wig. Blaze the bestie, it was your fake beard! Yeah. Fake beard, beard wig, whatever. Oh! Oh, I thought we were actually going to see it burn all the way off. Aha, this is a real beard, you know. Don't tease me like that, Edgeworth. Your son must have realized the truth before anyone else. That's why he was trying so desperately to protect you. You were also worried that he would tell the truth. Isn't that why you drove your son away from here? Because he knew that his father was hiding a burn under his fake beard. Ah! Blaze the bestie! How about you remove that fake beard of yours? Yeah! Oh yeah, it burns! Oh god, nothing! Whoa! Was your hair a burn too? A be a burn? Hair a burn? Hair a fake too? Or did you really just burn it off? That's a pretty interesting breakdown. A burn mark? Prosecutor Edgeworth. Justice has been served before the goddess of law. For that, I give you my thanks. So is that it? There's gotta be more. We haven't broken them completely yet. Like, there's gotta be at least one final testimony. I should be the one thanking you. Blaze the bestia, hereby announce my verdict. You should be taken into custody for the murder of Joe Crane. Is that really it? I really feel like there should be, like, one more thing. No? That's it? It feels a bit weak. I feel like there should have been one more thing, but... Nah. Mr. Edgeworth, thank you very much. I'm so happy that you believed in me to the very end. Yeah, this is the end of case music. So that was really it? The case is good. I really enjoyed this case. And I'm very curious as to where case 5 is going, but is that really it? The end just kind of came out of nowhere. I mean, I expect it to be done in this session, but I didn't think it'd be this close to the beginning of my session. There's no need to thank me. As a prosecutor. No, as a friend. I simply wanted to save you. Prosecutor Edgeworth, I bring good tidings. It seems that former Chairman de Bestie has been safely detained in the detention center. However, the search for the murder weapon, the auction gavel, continues. Blaze de Bestie is a shrewd man. There's a good chance that he's already disposed of it. There's also... one piece of testimony that concerns me. Blaze de Bestie mentioned that the only thing he did not fake were the letters. Oh! The only thing he didn't fake with the letters. Ooh, maybe my theory was true. Oh, man. And K still has never memory back. That's probably important. Oh, case five. Oh, my God. What's it going to be like? I've actually gotten some, um, not feedback. Um, not on my videos. But, um, I was watching somebody else play a TNT Let's Play. And then there were people talking about their favorite Ace Attorney game. And someone said, like, their favorite case in the series is case five of this game. So, I'm just definitely curious. My favorite game in the series is still Case 4 of JFA, but uh, we'll see how good this Case 5 is. See if it lives up to the hype of that one comment I read. I know it's only one person's opinion, but hey. You not fake with the letters. What do you mean? First, he found the letter in Jill Crane's clothes. Uh-huh. Then he also found this letter on Kay, who was unconscious in the storeroom. 
So they did really know each other. Maybe my theory about Kay losing her memory at a really young age is true. The contents of the letter seem to suggest the two had been corresponding with each other. Which is why Blaze de Bestie assumed that the two were working together. Ridiculous. That can't be right. After reading the two letters, he decided to pin the crime on Kay Faraday. In order to cast suspicion on her, he planted one of the letters in a noticeable spot. The deceased Jill Crane's left breast pocket. Isn't that just an excuse? Yes. That is what I thought as well. It may have simply been a last-ditch effort to save himself. The question is why bother if he admits that everything else was forged. However, before the stern eyes of the goddess of law, these are all trivial matters. His crime shall certainly not go unpunished. With this, I have finally fulfilled one of my long-standing missions. Hmm. <laughs> How long-standing, huh? I wonder. Judge Courtney, my opinion of you has changed, though it doesn't alter the fact that, uh, in order to be incognito, you were a complete bitch to me, even when your father, uh, Sebastian's father wasn't around. I mean, Sir Sebastian was there, but he's an idiot, so he probably wouldn't care if you were a bit nicer. Will you tell me what you know? Why did Blaze de Bestie murder Jill Crane? And what lies hidden behind this case? Yes, I don't mind. You have the right to know everything. Long ago, Jill Crane was in love with a cameraman. Uh, wait, Crane. Crane, is, is that what it comes from? Like, the camera? Because you can have, like, a crane, a camera on the crane, kind of? That man was pursuing the black market auction as a journalist. And then, before he could reach the truth, he was erased, of course. The feeling, the feelings, and the items Miss Crane inherited from her beloved brought her to the auction. She had come to exact revenge on the conductor, Blaze. Although in the end, she was the one who was murdered instead. I see. Yeah, that does make sense based on the conversation we heard with the, um, the, the what is it thing? The, the thing from case one, the... Stuffed animal, that's all they call it? <laughs> what kind of stuffed animal? Oh, the bull, according to Kay. I see, so that's what happened. Well, the goddess of law cannot condone her actions. We have succeeded in her goal of bringing Blaze de Bestie's crimes to light. So what were those crimes? Were they just killing the guy, or was, it, was there more? So Judge Courtney's goal was to expose Blaze de Bestie and reveal the dark secrets of the PIC. Um, by the way, what happened to the young prosecutor? We've been unable to contact him for some time now. Do you have any idea where he might be? I had not been truly working for him, so... Hmm? You don't know. I see. I feel very sorry for him. What you should be sorry for is the fact that he was kept in the dark until now. No matter how cruel reality is, you'll have to accept it. And from there, character development, we hope. If he can't, he won't be able to walk his own path in life. Ever. A father's influence is not something that is easily erased. However, I'm sure he'll be able to change from here on out. Yes, that's right. Surely, you must be right. Yeah, everybody here has a... Everybody here has a dead father, uh, or a father that's been put in jail, except Justine, as far as we know. She's the hot man out! Oh, well, I mean, I don't know if Gumshoe's in the room either. If he's here, then I guess that doesn't really count either. Although, Bad was a role model. Maybe that counts, kind of. Will I, too, be able to walk my own path in life? You're probably not going to get your memories back until case 5, but you probably will get them back. Kay, is your body alright? Whoa, that's super sudden. Yes, uh, thanks to you. I'm so sorry, even though you're my patient, you ended up getting suspected because of me. Ow! 
You can't just take care of the patient's body. You gotta take care of the heart, too. That's my granny, Kay. How are your memories? I feel like I'm on the verge of remembering something. Question is what? Well then, I shall take my leave here. I'll be presiding over Pachika Roland's trial. Ha <laughs> ha! Uh, nice. That's kind of funny. That's a trial I'd like to see. Oh, uh, who's the prosecutor? Who's the defense attorney? That would be the trial for the murder of Horace Knightley. Who's in charge of the defense? Miss Crane was supposed to be a defense attorney, but now that she has passed away... Oh, so she was a defense attorney. You see, okay, so she was a defense attorney. So you weren't calling a prosecutor an attorney. Mmm, mmm. It would be weird for a prosecutor to be on the prosecutor uh, something committee, investigator, whatever it's called. Um, but for a defense attorney, it's almost even weirder. I mean, wouldn't the defense attorney have potentially have grudges against certain prosecutors? I mean, maybe they'd have to get some kind of impartial test to get to that point, but to be on the PSE, but I don't know. We are currently arranging for a replacement defense attorney. Jill Crane had been in charge of Patrico Rowland's defense. I'll also have to get in contact with Sebastian quickly since he's the prosecutor in charge. Oh god. Are we sure that she'll get uh, her just desserts with him in charge? I mean, yeah, you're the judge, but still. Please wait. What about Mr. Edgeworth's prosecutor's badge? Ah, there we go. What'll happen to his prosecutor's badge? With the chairman arrest, the PIC is no longer functional. So I cannot answer that question easily. Perhaps one could say, only the goddess of law knows. But that's... You don't need to worry about me. This is the path I have chosen. It seems you have no plans to change it either. Of course not. I chose this path to seek the truth. With the departure of Blaze de Bestie, the law has once again returned to our hands. Well, hopefully. Are you sure he was the only corrupt PIC member? If you truly desire to continue the prosecutor's path, I am willing to assist you in reclaiming your badge. Well, gee, that's nice. So from here, are you just going to be my friend for the rest of the game? I still really did want to see her squirm, but seeing her squirm at this point now maybe would be a bit weird. I don't know. I do want to see her at a bit of a vulnerable state. Like, anytime you have characters that's really cool like this, you have to see them vulnerable at some point for them to really work. I mean, we saw it with Edgeworth, we saw it with Francisco, we saw it with Godot. Um, we saw it with Lang. Uh, bad, even with Bad, we kind of saw it. We saw him at his retired, like, you know, at the end of his line when he was, you know, at the end of his rope. Um, all the really cool characters, for them to really work, we need to see them vulnerable at some point. So, if you're gonna be this, you know, badass, like, um, stone-cold-faced person, you do at some point need to be vulnerable. Maybe in case 5. I was hoping this case, but maybe it could still work. Anyways. I appreciate the sentiment, but I must decline. Oh. I did not relinquish my badge with half-hearted feelings. I see. It seems that our paths of law will continue to run counter to each other. Heh. <laughs> Until our paths cross once again, I shall have you hold on to that badge. Don't get it dirty. That was my intention from the start. Aw, is Francisco a bit, um, butthurt about this? However, on occasion, the goddess of law is quite generous. Please return this notebook to its proper owner. The promise notebook. Kay's Promise Notebook. It seems this was scheduled to be put up for bidding at the black market auction. I see. Just like all of them. The name Kay is written on the notebook. It seems Blaze de Besti quickly realized this belonged to the girl. Since the letters he found also contained the same name. You speak as if you really did not know about the letters. Are you saying that Blaze really did not prepare the letters himself? Yes. That man said to himself, Kay Faraday's goal was to steal back the notebook. Jill Crane's goal was to get revenge. Oh, really? Well, okay, it, was, it wasn't to steal back a notebook for Edgeworth. It was to, to steal back her own notebook. That notebook would be really important to her. 
Because it, it was, um, you know, her, her promise notebook to her dad. I could see her actually trying to steal that then. All right. Still, though, that means she did know Jill. Either from before her memory loss at a young age, if that even happened, or after. In order to achieve their goals, the two teamed up to infiltrate the auction. Or so he says. Unfortunately, this was all Blaze's misunderstanding. It was purely a coincidence. If the attorney from the PIC and Kay really were acquaintances... It'd be strange that she never mentioned it to me, considering her personality. Haha, <laughs> <laughs> you really do trust her, don't you? In the end, the notebook was used as another red herring, but... It's something that is very important to that girl, isn't it? Indeed it is. Maybe it'll trigger memory. I'll make a special exception and return it. I'm sure that's what the goddess of law desires. Even if it doesn't go correctly with the law, fuck the law if, um, I think it's okay, right? Right? I mean, isn't that what I've been doing? But okay. That's, um, I appreciate it. I shall pray that she recovers her lost memories. I shall pray as well. Um, is something wrong? Okay, I'm returning something very important to you. Whoa! That's a nice picture. This is... Ah, uh, is she gonna get her memories back? Always greet people with a smile, even people you don't know. Never cry in front of strangers. Look, Daddy! I wrote them all down! I'll be sure to follow all of our promises and become a hero just like you, Daddy. Ah, that's right. There's one more. I forgot to write down the most important promise. Promise number five. Always try your hardest to learn about things you don't understand. <laughs> I'll be sure to remember. I'll never ever forget them. Always try your hardest. To learn things you don't understand. That's right! I'm... I am! Whoa, that's a freaky scream. Are you getting all your memories back now? I am... The Great Thief Who Steals the Truth, K. Faraday. I'm the second Yadagarasu, Mr. Edric's assistant. Oh, she's back. I was wondering if we were getting an expression from her like that in this getup. <laughs> Looking at it now... Yeah, I guess that suits K. Okay, so you're getting your memories back before I thought you would, because I thought the fact that you had notes with each other from Jill and K was going to be important, and you getting your memories back now would, like, reveal something, but I guess not. But I'm glad to have you back, K. I really do enjoy this personality of yours. I mean, SK was okay, but JK is the best. K, you remember! <laughs> it's kind of embarrassing, though. Thank you so much! It's all thanks to you, Mr. Edgeworth. Even when I lost my memories, you were still always trying to save me, right? Huh. <laughs> it seems you're back to normal. Wow, Kay! You've gotten better! Ugh. Gosh, all the high pitches. Health comes first. Now you can relax. Just make sure you don't run off and lose all your memories again. What a pain in the buttocks. Miss Jensen, Dr. Young. Thanks for worrying about me. If you're feeling all better, how about changing back into your own clothes? I wanted your clothes for you. I washed your clothes for you, Kay. So you're so nice and clean. These clothes. Wasn't Detective Gumshoe holding onto them? He said forensics was done with them, so he gave them back to me. Have they revealed the results of the analysis yet? Um, to be honest, I actually didn't think to ask about that. Now, now, more importantly, let's hurry up and get you changed, Kay. Hmm, still, isn't it better if we do not remove her bandages? Ah, she should be fine now. Kay just bumped her head. She didn't really have any other major injuries. Then what was with all the bandages? Then why was she so heavily bandaged? Better safe than sorry. Uh, a pound of preservation is worth any answer to cure. That's my motto. <laughs> what? Okay, so she wasn't nearly as injured as we thought. <laughs> wow. What a troublesome motto. Come on, Kay. Let's get you dressed up over there. 
Now, this is definitely what a great thief should look like. Good to have you back, officially, Kay. A smile certainly suits you best. In the past, and now as well. Miss Von Karma, thank you for coming too. I... I only came because Scruffy asked me to. That's Scruffy. He also wanted to see your, your energetic, energetic self again. Gummy? What happened to Gummy? Who knows? Maybe he was disgusted with the man who willingly threw away his prosecutor's badge. <laughs> Detective Gumshoe. I must be going soon. I'll be taking these ladies in for questioning. What's going to happen to the two of them? One aided in the murder of an attorney, the other forged an autopsy report 18 years ago. In the case with my papa. Those crimes definitely won't disappear. Of course, I'll mention in court that they were being blackmailed by Blaze. We'll be just fine. As long as Granny's by my side, we're invincible. As long as I can keep um, hitting her in the head and she crunches my foot, we're an invincible duo. <laughs> Well then, take care, Miles Edgeworth. And Lord's here. <laughs> What's even the point? Now then, Kay. Sorry to ask so soon right after you gained your memories, but I have some questions. Sure, ask me anything you want. I'm all ears. What were you doing on the day you lost your memories? On that day, I was asked to come to Gord Lake. Gord Lake? That's a shift. I don't know who called me there, though. Oh, really? Did someone else forge the letters? Maybe uh, my theory was wrong. That's a nice shot of Kay, actually. I like it. As I was watching the moon at Gord Lake, a person in a red raincoat approached me. Oh. Okay. That's interesting. All of a sudden, he used some kind of drug to knock me out. Well, then. What? What is she saying? The place where Kay saw the moon was at Gord Lake? When I woke up, it seemed somehow I ended up on the roof of the Grand Tower. My mind was still in a daze, so I stumbled around for a bit. That's when I found the person in the red raincoat collapsed! I don't think it's the same person though, is it? Probably somebody else. I was startled, and when I stepped back in panic, I fell from a high place and got knocked out cold again. So that's how she didn't notice the, the, the shaft. Because she just randomly woke up there. Makes sense. And when I woke up, all my memories were gone. Person in the red raincoat. Who exactly was that person? Oh yeah. Certain that I saw them walking in midair. <laughs> what? Hmm. Somehow this is all starting to make my head hurt. Please calm down. You're just a little confused because you've only recently gotten your memories back. Most likely this is the main cause of your confused memories. Oh, down a hole. Memories of two places. Your name on the notebook. This is the main cause of your confused memories. Your memories of two places. You fell in a hole. Your name on the notebook. Your name on the notebook? Her name would be on the notebook. Two, your memories are two places. This is probably the main cause of your confused memories. You saw the moon at both the Gord Lake Park and the Grand Tower rooftop. Which led you confuse the, to confuse the two places. Huh? But... Aren't they totally different places? Even if I was in a daze, do you really think I'd get, get them confused? Most likely there was something at the Grand Tower which led to your confusion. Fuck. What? What? I'm not gonna save. I don't save during these parts. You either get it right or you get it wrong. Um... But what, 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 what do I think? What do I think? What do I think? There was something at the Grand Tower which led to your confusion. Shit. I don't know. Was it the tree? Maybe it was the tree. Grand Tower which led to your confusion. 
Was it the food stand? Man, I don't know. I'm gonna say it was the tree. Because I can't check my evidence right now. The Grand Tower Rooftop and Gourd Lake have two points in common. They both have a cherry tree and a, and a food stall. Thank gosh I was right. That was actually kind of a guess. I remembered the food stall, but I thought the cherry tree was more important, even though I don't remember that there was a cherry tree in Gourd Lake, honestly. Now that you mention it... Your memories were confused because you had been in two similar locations. The person that you first saw could not have been walking in midair. They were simply walking on the ground at Gord Lake Park. You must have gotten that scene confused with the Grand Tower rooftop. So that's what happened! How dare they steal the memories of a great thief! They'll pay for this! Nevertheless, I wonder who the person that assaulted Kay was. The person in the red raincoat who appeared at Gord Lake. Oh, what? What's going on now? Hmm? What's that noise? Sounds like it's coming from the storeroom. Oh? Is somebody in there? Maybe something's gonna get stolen. Mr. Edgeworth, let's go check it out! What's this? My sugar bug sent Stiglin. I smell me another scoop. Aw, oh, you don't need to come. You're still here? Haha. <laughs> oh, we're just gonna casually walk over? Instead of run? I think we'd run. At least Kay would run. Edgeworth might walk. Kay would run. So what's going on here? Would you stop with the photos, Lada? She better not be in case five. Something's missing, right? Or maybe just something here is that was always in the exhibit is is being working now for some reason. Miss Edgeworth, this walkie-talkie thing here is what's beeping. Was this always here or is it new? Oh, was Gumshoe kidnapped? I I just I just had a thought because we don't know where Gumshoe is, right? And um. I remembered in uh, Injustice for All, when uh, Maya was kidnapped, um, we ended up getting a walkie-talkie to talk to somebody with, the kidnapper. What if Gumshoe was kidnapped? The transceiver. Why do I feel like I've seen it somewhere before? No way. Is it the same transceiver from To Killer and Justice for All? No way. No way. Is Killer really coming back? Because if he wasn't... I once I realized that, you know, the red raincoat was just because it was a piece of evidence in the evidence auction, I'm like, oh, maybe the killer's not coming back. And that made me depressed. Like, please tell me he's coming back. Maybe he actually is coming back. That would be very scary, but I would love it. Let's actually catch him in this game. It's still beeping, Mr. Edgeworth. I'm not particularly familiar with this sort of device. Come on, we have to answer it. Here goes. Click. Hello? Edgeworth speaking. You're not Edgeworth. Hey, please don't just answer it on your own. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and assume this is the killer, just because I wouldn't know who it is otherwise. I'm speaking with. What would the killer's voice be? I am quite the assassin. I'm speaking with Mr. Miles Edgeworth, I presume. I presume? I presume. Shelly the killer. I'm Shelly the killer. Shelly the killer. It's kind of British like Edgeworth, but more of a, more of a refined manner even. I'm speaking with, uh, Mr. Myers- Mr. Myers Edgeworth, I presume? This voice is... It's Killer. Shelly the Killer! Called it! Fucking called it! Yeah! He's coming back! Yes! I was so worried he was just gonna be a Case 1 thing. They're like, it's cool, isn't it? He's in Case 1, great! Oh, he's bringing him back, yes! Let's catch him in this game! Yes! I congratulate you on resolving the case, however... Can you truly say in good conscience that it has been sold? Are you aware of the mastermind who is pulling the strings behind this incident? You! Why do you know about this incident? That's not important right now, wouldn't you agree? Right now, we're discussing the mastermind behind this case. I've had an inkling that such a person existed, even before you said anything. Oh, really? After all, there was evidence to suggest that someone had used Kay to disrupt the investigation. Huh? There was? You mean the letters? Who's this mastermind? <laughs> we obviously won't find out in this case. I would like to hear your thoughts on the matter. Would you kindly show me the evidence that indicates the existence of a mastermind? Um... The ticket stuff. 
That that the ticket stub works too, doesn't it? Or wait, no. Yeah, it does. The evidence indicate. Well, I mean, there's the letters, but I want to say the ticket stub. I'm gonna feel really stupid if it's the letters, though. <sighs> but the letters are obvious, and the ticket stub would make me feel smart if I'm right. Um, I'm thinking about this. Well, they said the only thing that wasn't forged was the letter, so I'm gonna go with the letter. Take that. This indicates the existence of a mastermind in this case. Hmm, I can't say I really understand. I'm very sorry, but I also don't understand. Am I gonna get another chance? No! This wasn't it! Wasn't there anything that was left unexplained among the evidence? I wait your answer, Mr. Edgeworth. Would you kindly- Oh, I get another chance. Okay, so it was the ticket stub? Was I right all along? This and- No? Um... Well, I mean, the letters make sense because he said he didn't forge that, but... Shoot. I don't know. Well, then what is it? What indicates the existence of a mastermind? I'm thinking. Thankfully, I don't lose health for this. Stuffed animal? Stuffed animal. It was recording. This indicates the existence. Uh, oh, wow. I'm really derping on this, I guess. Evidence that indicates the existence of a mastermind. I don't know. Maybe it's I just have to show the other letter? That would be stupid. What? What? Both letters should work. Both letters should work. I'm sorry, game. I don't care what Edgeworth has to say for the rest of his comment here. Both letters should work. Okay? Okay. Because they're a set. They're a pair. They should both work. Anyways. It was the letter that Kay allegedly sent to the victim. Come to think of it, I don't remember writing that letter at all. Who could have prepared this letter? I too am quite curious to know. Does it conflict with your client? So, you're not the one who wrote the letter. What could I possibly gain from doing such an act? Is it not necessary for you to stand in court in order to make, make the truth clear? Stand in court where, when, how, why? Who are we prosecuting? I'm confused. What can you possibly do now that your badge has been taken from you? <laughs> you rhymed! I look forward to finding out from the shadows. You won't stay in the shadows forever, Dekaila. We will arrest you before this case is over. This game is over. We better. If he gets away again, I'm gonna be kinda mad. This man, how does he know that? We have an understanding. Please ensure you do not betray my trust. Betray your trust? I'm not your client! We shouldn't- we don't have any understanding with each other. Okay, I'm assuming the reason he knows is because somebody like... Either Justine, or maybe Sebastian is secretly evil, or something like that. Somebody involved with this case. I mean, who- who is there that's involved with this case? Other than maybe one of the nameless PIC members. That just is like Justine, Sebastian, people like that. Um, but yeah, you're talking to me like I'm your client because of the whole trust thing. Now then, if you'll excuse me. Fairly well, Edgeworth. May we talk again? He said the case wasn't solved yet. What did he mean by that? And why would Mr. DeKiller even bother telling us that? Nothing makes sense anymore. It's to help his client, probably. Whoever that is. This case has not reached its true conclusion yet. However, although I've lost my prosecutor's badge, who I am still has not changed. This is who I am. <laughs> Shadow. Eh. That's still one of my favorite lines from that game. Even though the game itself isn't very good, I still uh, really like that line. Well, I don't know where this may lead me. I shall reveal the truth. I swear it. The end. In this case, it really should be a to be continued, though. What is the last one called? The Grand Turnabout? 
The Grand Turnabout, really? So are we gonna have to do it the Grand Tower again? Or maybe the... Yeah, I guess it has to. Um, all right, I might as well. So who's the picture gonna be for Case 5? Sebastian, yeah, he's gonna have some real development here. And that's K. Gregory, Justine, Edgeworth. So, who got left out? Ray got left out! Ray didn't get, um... Ray didn't get a case. He didn't get a, get a sprite in, in one of these cases. Oh, that's a shame. I'm sorry, Ray. Um, fuck it. I'm starting it now. Um, I'm gonna split the recording, but I have time. I'm gonna record. I didn't get to record yesterday, so I would have probably started recording this today anyways. So I'm gonna record a bit extra than I normally would. Normally I'd just stop here, but I'm not going to. Um, so, I mean, I'm gonna end the part still, though. I'll see you guys on next time in case five. Let's play Starting Investigations, Prosecutor's Path, Miles Edgeworth Blind. Ooh, boy, things are really heating up. See you then. Bye.